Do Muslims worship Muhammad? According to modern Muslim apologist Muhammad Hijab, the answer is yes. We'll explain it to you right now. The series that we've been doing for a while about Aisha and Muhammad, uh, and of course, when I say we, that means myself and our dear brother David Wood. And last time, if you've watched that episode, we did play a short video clip by a modern day uh, Muslim apologist by the name of Muhammad Hijab, who was commenting actually on chapter 65 of the Quran, verse four, and rightly stating that if you rely on the Quran only, you are going to basically conclude that it is allowed for you to marry a five-year-old, for instance, which is a severe case of pedophilia. But we're going to show you today that Muslims actually, like Muhammad Hijab and others, worship Muhammad and elevate Muhammad to a status above Allah himself. How are we gonna do so? Well, that's why we have David Wood here and both of us will interact with the same video clip one more time and comment on that. David, welcome back. Yeah, you know, our Muslim friends get awfully uncomfortable when we start pointing out that they worship Muhammad. I say, what are you talking about? We don't worship Muhammad. We want it, we're going to make it very clear here in this video. According to Muhammad, they worship Muhammad. Yeah. According to Muhammad, modern Muslims like Muhammad Hijab and Muslims around the world actually worship Muhammad. And if they say they don't, they're saying Muhammad, Muhammad was wrong. And so we have to piece this together because it's not obvious until uh, we, we, we put all of this together uh, for our Muslim friends. But let's go ahead and rewatch this video clip. Just the, the background is that Muhammad Hijab is talking to some Quran only Muslims, Muslims who don't believe in the other sources, don't believe they have to follow the other sources. They just believe what the, the Quran reveals. And he's pointing out that they have a problem here because if you just go with what the Quran says, you would conclude that you can have sex even with a five-year-old little girl, a prepubescent five-year-old girl. And he calls this a severe type of pedophilia. That's right. Let's go ahead and check out this clip. If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. If you just read the Quran, it is halal, it would, just, it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. In Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, And the ones who had never been pubescent before. And by the way, this is very important, yeah? I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's not because of puberty because that verse in the Quran actually says Lam Yahidn. They never had puberty before. You can't go around that. The Quran doesn't say, doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that the woman has to be pubescent. I dare you to find one verse in the Quran where it says you're not allowed to marry someone based on harm or you're not allowed to have sexual intercourse based on harm or you're not allowed to marry someone based on puberty. So if you're a Quran alone, you're allowed to have no, sexual intercourse no, with five-year-olds. Get me one verse in the Quran which says the woman has to be pubescent. No, one verse. I want one verse in the Quran from the beginning of the book to the end of the book which says that she has to be pubescent. So okay, so that makes it halal from your perspective. From your perspective, it's halal. You know in the Quran it says, It says you're not allowed to marry your mom. It says you're not allowed to marry your sister, your auntie. Where does it say you're not allowed to marry a, a prepubescent? I'm looking for one verse that you, you can say you pinpoint it and say, this is where it says prepubescent marriage or whatever is not allowed. So if you're Quran alone, you're still towards pedophilia, a severe type of pedophilia, a wife abuse, a severe type of wife abuse. Now, you can look at the Muslim comments, comments from Muslims on Muhammad Hijab's video where he made these points. And it's, it's a much longer, it's a much longer clip. But they think he's got a brilliant response 
to Quran only Muslims. That right. if you just believe in the Quran and you don't have Muhammad in the Hadith to tell you, you need to wait a little long until she's a little bit past the age of five before you start having sex with and her. And that's the point behind what he's doing. I mean, mm -hmm. I want people to know he wasn't doubting Islam. He was just pointing the fact that Quran alone is not going to give you the answer. Mm -hmm. And so the point he's making, the point he's making is you need to go outside of the Quran. The Quran would, would allow you to have sex with a five-year-old. And that's why you need Muhammad to avoid those consequences because Muhammad waited until she was nine. And um, even though he didn't wait until she had reached puberty, uh, he must have been waiting until she could handle a grown man penetrating her, right? So very disgusting stuff to be, to be even talking about. But that's the point he's making. That's the point he's making. He's saying, you can't just go with what Allah says here. If you just go with what Allah says, you would conclude you can have sex with a five-year-old. That's why you need Muhammad to guide you to another conclusion. And he says, if you just stick with what Allah says, you would conclude uh, that, that you're steered towards a severe, his words, not mine, a mm -hmm. severe type of pedophilia. Why? Now, obviously, this is a problem. This is some disgusting stuff. Muslims are saying that in their book, if you just go with what their book says, you'd say, hey, sex with five-year-olds is totally halal. Um, but it actually gets worse for, for them because based on what Muhammad Hijab just said and what so many Muslims would agree with, they just admitted that they worship Muhammad. How can we say that they just worship Muhammad? Well, we have to listen to Allah and Muhammad on this one. So let's look at uh, a passage from the Quran real quick. Here we have Surah 9, verse 31 in the middle there. And so this is uh, briefly after Surah 9, verse 29, which commands Muslims to violently subjugate Jews and Christians. And the obvious objection that would come up is why are we subjugating Jews and Christians? And one of the reasons given for why they are to subjugate Jews and Christians is because we aren't actually monotheists. We've become uh, mushriks, right? Mm -hmm. And it says right here, how have, we, how have we become mushriks? Surah 9, verse 31, they have taken as lords beside Allah their rabbis and their monks and the Messiah, son of Mary, when they were bidden to worship only one God, there is no God save him, be he glorified from all that they ascribe, to, uh, ascribe as partner unto him. Now, it's true that we take Jesus as Lord because he is Lord, but there's notice this is a little confusing here. They have taken as lords their rabbis and monks. We take rabbis and monks, Jews and Christians take rabbis and monks as lords instead of Allah? I don't know about you, but I don't recall worshiping um, rabbis and monks. So what in the world could Muhammad possibly mean here, right? What does Allah mean? Well, interestingly, this is exactly the objection that was raised to Muhammad. And we have, uh, it, it's, it's in numerous sources, but uh, we have it here in the commentary of Ibn Kathir. So, so going up to towards the top, um, there was, an Arab who had converted to Christianity, and then Muslims come to his area. And so he shows up, you can see up there uh, uh, towards the top, when the people announced his arrival, Adi went to the messenger of Allah wearing a silver cross around his neck. The messenger of Allah recited this ayah. So he recites um, this passage from Surah 9. They took their rabbis and their monks to be their lords, besides Allah. Now, this would have been confusing to him. What, what do you mean we take rabbis and monks as lords? Adi commented, I said they did not worship them. So he's saying, what do you mean lords? We, we don't worship. We don't worship our rabbis and monks. So he's objecting to the idea that Jews and Christians take rabbis and monks as lord. He's saying, what? We don't worship them. And Muhammad responds, the prophet said, yes, they did. They, rabbis and monks, prohibited the allowed for them, Christians and Jews, and allowed the prohibited, and they obeyed them. This is how they worshipped them. So he's not talking about bowing down and worshipping someone. He's saying that when Allah gives you a revelation... And then you say, well, I'm going to take what this man says, this, this human being says, 
then you're setting up that human being as your Lord. You're saying, hey, I'm doing what this human being says to do. And he's saying, according to Muhammad, you just worship the person because you've just associated him as a partner with Allah. So <laughs> why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? Mm -hmm. Notice, Muhammad is clear that when he's talking about worshiping rabbis and monks, he's not talking about bowing down and saying, oh, I worship you, my great monk or my great rabbi or anything. He's just saying when that mere human being tells you, tells you something and right. you just say, okay, I'm, I'm listening to you, especially if it overrules what Allah, what Allah has said. If Allah has said that something is halal, this is according to Muhammad, if right. Allah says something is halal and you say, no, it's forbidden, or if Allah says something is forbidden and a human being says, no, it's halal, and you say, okay, I'm going with the human being, then and according to Muhammad, you have worshipped that person. Why is this relevant? Because well, you obeyed the command of that person, that person. and overruled the command of God. Uh-huh. Why is this relevant? Muhammad Hijab says, if you just go with what Allah says, you would say it's halal. His words, not mine. That's right. That's you would right. say it's halal to have sex with a five-year-old girl. But you find out from Muhammad, you have to wait until she's older because it would be harmful to, the, to a five-year-old to have sex with her. And so you find out from Muhammad that you have to wait when Allah says, it's halal. And so notice what's going on here. According to Muhammad, if you say, well, God says one thing, but this human being says it's actually forbidden, then you're worshiping the person. But wait a minute. According to Muhammad Hijab, Allah tells you it's halal to have sex with a five-year-old, but we know from Muhammad that it's not. You can't have sex with a five-year-old. You have to wait until she's ready. And therefore, not according to me, not according to you, according to Muhammad, in, in, in Muhammad the prophet of Islam, and Muhammad Hijab, Muslims are worshiping Muhammad. Absolutely. And in fact, uh, maybe we should do another show just to talk about the fact that Muslims do worship Muhammad. And I would add, if you would follow the Quran, they worship Muhammad and even their scholars at the same level. And that's the problem that we are faced with here, our dear friends. You do not listen to what Allah says, you listen to what Muhammad says, or in these days to what the clerks and the scholars will say. And unfortunately for you, you are basically committing shirk because you are adding more lords and more gods next to Allah, exactly what chapter 931 was fighting against. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Hopefully this series has been helpful to all of you. Until we meet next time in another series, God bless you. Take care. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.